And Jeanette, Jeanette, I'm going to mute you. All right, perfect. All right, guys. Well, happy Wednesday. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. Definitely a lot of stuff on my mind. We have been learning so much about the market, and I want to just take this time today. No guests on the line. I just kind of wanted to recap. I wanted to slow down, and I wanted to share with you some resources, some thoughts, and let's have some open dialogue about what's happening in the market. Because uh, I, I think Ernesto said this yesterday, like, I'm not really necessarily scared. It's just uh, us adjusting, right? Adjusting our verbiage, adjusting our dialogue. We've been talking about this over and over again. So uh, we're going to go into it today. I'm going to share some resources, some thoughts with you guys, and I want to hear your guys' dialogue as well. And so Without further ado, I am going to actually turn it over to, you know, let's go to Cortez, my man. Cortez, it was great to see you last week. Great to meet, meet two of your children. Um, my daughter talked about your daughter, her new friend. They hit it off. I thought that was super, super cute. So, my man, I wanted to turn it over to you. Have you bring us out on the field on this beautiful Wednesday morning. So, Cortez, my man, hit us with it. Bring us out on the field. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, my daughter did not want to leave the office that day as well. She was like, no, nah, they're coming back. They're coming back. I heard him say that they're coming back. So I was like, no, nah, we got to go, baby. <laughs> but um, it's Wednesday. It's uh, it's an interesting market right now. I'm I'm excited about it as well. Like, um, I don't know. I'm new, so it's, it's nothing to me, you know, like, so I'm just learning. But I just want to tell everybody to stay motivated. Don't get discouraged. And just put in, put in the work, just put mm -hmm. in the work and just have a good day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love this. And I think like that should be part of your homework and your tasks for the week, because when you're thinking about inflation, when you're thinking about interest rates, when you're thinking about year over year growth, when you're thinking about equity, when you're seeing all these things on social, when you're watching all of these videos, it's really hard at first to say, okay, how am I? If I'm not a numbers person, if I'm not an analytical person, how am I going to convey that information? And so it's important that you guys spend that time. It's just like we do with our buyer's consultation. It's just like you would practice your listing presentation. All those things are really, really important. But like the internal workings of the market right now is what's going to be most important. You could do a fire buyer's presentation and stay on the surface, but you need to be able to dive in. And when you're on a listing appointment, you're going to have face some challenges right now. So I think sitting down, writing it out, and actually articulating it to a consumer, saying it on your phone, saying it to a team member, like role playing through this, I think that's how we're all going to get a little bit better. So I want to share some information with you that I've learned over the couple last couple of weeks. And I've been really just trying to take it in from all different areas, but I'm not scared one bit, nor should you guys be. So average interest rate right now on a credit card is 17%. Crazy to think about. Average auto loan right now is at a 9% on a depreciating asset. As soon as you drive that car off the lot, what happens to that car is that it instantly goes down in value. So I love what Kenny said yesterday at our team meeting that that's not this market, right? We have to be able to control the narrative and explain to a consumer what is actually happening. So what I did today is I pulled up some examples of things that I've learned over the last couple of weeks. Some of you guys have been on these calls. Some of you guys have seen some of this dialogue and these examples. But what I want to do is just give you a refresher about conversations that we've had over the course of the last couple of weeks. And so let me share my screen. And if you guys have things that you want to share, feel free, grab the mic. But I think that, let me see here. Let me go here. All right. So this one right here, how many people remember this example here that everyone gets an orange line? I think when I did it, I drew it on the screen, but everyone got a blue line. How many people, if you can give me just a reaction down below, remember this example right here? Can somebody give me a reaction just so I could see? Cortez, okay, cool. Who else remembers this example? Ernesto, were you on that call? All right, so Ernesto, I'm gonna to turn to you, brother, because I think this is a really, really powerful conversation. <laughs> In your words, can you articulate what this example means here and how you would share this with a potential consumer? Yeah, what this is saying is the chart on the left says that your payments are going up over time. Your equity never changes. It stays flat. You cannot earn equity if you're just renting. Correct. Which the one on the right says your payments will stay the same forever. That's why they're flat. Like That's as high as they're ever going to be when you buy your home. And then as you sit in it, the longer that you stay in it, your equity goes up over time. Beautiful. And then what could happen on the right side with the payment over time? 
you could refinance. So we're getting in, into an era where like, I cannot remember, even when we bought my, my mom's place nine years ago now, I mean, our rate back then was in the fours. So it's been over 10 years, easy. I'd have to go back and see when was the last time we were over 6%. So the probability of you having an opportunity to refinance in a few years is actually pretty good. Absolutely. And so, so you just have to share with people, like, which side of the equation do you want to be on? Obviously, rents have gone up historically and will always go up. But like we said yesterday on our team meeting, and if you guys missed it, I thought it was cool because I heard it and I shared it with you. And now I'm seeing Vanessa put it on her social. We're, we're married to the home and we're dating the interest rate, right? Because there could be a time in a year or two from now that we just drop that interest rate and we go with a different interest rate. So we're, we're married to the home, but we are dating the interest rate. So um, Ernesto, I, I love this example. I think we should probably put something like this in our buyer's consultation because I think it really helps to, to showcase and articulate what is actually happening. So appreciate your feedback on that. Um, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you recently have watched the most recent um, weather report? And I know we talk about a lot of this stuff, but I'm kind of just really trying to put everything together in a big, beautiful package so you guys know where to go. Um, can anybody share with me? Um, well, first off, let me just get a reaction below. How many people have watched the most recent weather report on the Bay East Association Realtors or in your market in your, if you have a video such as that? Has anybody watched the most recent one? Okay, cool. If you guys have not, make sure that you guys are going to, and this is free. You do not have to be a member. We've talked about this over and over again. You guys go to the Bay East Association of Realtors, and all you do is you go into community information, go to real estate, housing, and statistics. What you're going to do for the people in the East Bay, this is really powerful information. If you're in a different market, then you go to your local board. I'm sure they have something that looks some, similar to something that looks similar to this. But let's just look at this for perspective. In last or last month, if you compare last month to the year over year, in the 880 corridor just alone, Berkeley was up 15% year over year in home sales. Fremont was up 22% and Hayward was up 22%. Excuse me, not home sales. I'm talking the price of the home. Um, Albany was the only place that saw double digit dip. It was down 12% and Alameda was actually down slightly by 2%. And uh, I don't think that's going to last long. But let's talk about West Contra Costa County. Richmond was up 35% and Pinole was up 16%. Contra Costa Central, Clayton was up 36% and Walnut Creek was up 23%. Well, well when we're talking to consumers, if consumers are worried about a 2%, 3%, even 4% interest rate hike, well, they're potentially losing out on what if could have been 10, 15, 20% year over year growth in their equity. And so it's about being able to, to face their fears head on because the one thing that you need to find out is where are they getting their information and what do they understand about the current market? And then it is your job, uh, Andrew, to share with them the reality of what is actually happening in our real estate market. So Kaleem, let me ask you a quick question. What do you know about the current real estate market and what's going on? I'm sure you're reading the headlines, watching CNN. Tell me a little bit about what you know. All right, perfect, Mr. Consumer. Let me do this. I'm going to share with you the reality of what is actually happening in the city of Albany year over year. And I'm going to share some high-level information with you that's going to definitely make a huge impact on your purchase, right? Like share that information with people, but be able to put it in a way that really, really flows and that you have the strong dialogue with consumers. So going back to this, highly, highly recommend that you guys watch this and you watch this every single month, rain, snow, or shine. How many people right now are using market alerts, um, uh, market data, and information from Real Scout? I think this is an underused tool. Um, how many people on the call right now are using Real Scout to look at different market trends and information? Cool. I love this. I love this. I love this. I knew one of these questions would spark some hands up. Um, let's go keep your hand up. That way I can call on you. So let me go to Andrew. Andrew, how are you using and leveraging Real Scout to get new information about the market for the people that may not be using it right now, man? So can you share? Um, yeah. So basically, um, I'm fairly new to Real Scout, but I've started using it and setting up alerts for my um, buyers so that they understand how the market is changing in the cities that they're looking for. 
um, like new listings coming up, there's any like price changes or anything like that. So they're um, always stay updated as well as I am. Perfect. Perfect. I saw George, George, you had commented. Uh, and then if you guys had your hand up, leave them up so I can come back to you. Uh, George, you said something in the chat below. I think this is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So I, in back in August, I started keeping an Excel spreadsheet on um, different cities and I I planned, I live in Hayward, so I started keeping especially track on Hayward since August and a few different other cities and as time has gone on and I've closed deals in other cities like Vallejo and Elk Grove, I started adding those cities as well. And it helps me stay in tune when I'm showing houses, for example, in Hayward when the client's like, why is it, why is the price going 300000 over asking? And I'm like, well, actually, when we were back in January, compared to August, there were 104 active homes on the market just in Hayward. And in January, you saw a dip to the low to mid 20s. So as you can see, Hayward is highly desirable, but there's less inventory. So that's causing people to kind of fight just because it's the heart of the Bay and easily accessible. And if you look at the city developments, on city of Hayward, you can see they're gentrifying the hell out of Hayward. So that's how it's become inflated and overpriced. And so sharing that Excel spreadsheet um, on my buyer consultation with my most recent close in Elk Grove, they were like, we're dead set on San Lorenzo. I showed them the data from August up until when I started working with them a month and a half or two months ago and showing them that data on the Excel spreadsheet, they were just like, damn, okay, we can see why the house we wanted for 800,000 went for 1.1. And then I was like, have you guys thought of Elk Grove? And they were like, actually, no. Um, and then now they're actually loving the hell out of Elk Grove. And they were able to get, shucks, their house for 625 that Maria and I helped them close on a few weeks ago. And they got a larger, a much larger house, two story, three bedrooms, two baths, like, a freaking palace compared to what they were trying to get next door for under a thousand square feet that went for 1.1. Mm. I love this. And you know, you guys, I, I think that's a really, really important conversation because you're going to have consumers, right? And, and I think Mel experienced this the other day and Mel, maybe you could chime into our conver on our conversation that you and I had the other day. Sometimes people don't know what is possible outside of their county, outside of their city, outside of where their desired location may be until we just open up their mind to possibilities. Um, Mel had a client that was dead set on Tracy, or excuse me, dead set on Walnut Creek, but then told her they wanted to go and look in Tracy. So Mel, maybe you could chime in on this. I know that you're at the gym doing your stretches or whatever when you can take yourself off a of mute, but Ilona, you, oh, go ahead, Mel. Yeah, um, it all comes back down to empathy is you know what Elias and I talked about. Um, and it basically was just a lack of empathy on my part. I didn't realize that, you know, I, cause I was so gun ho on him being 26 or 27, him, you know, wanting to be close to the downtown area. He told me that he wanted to be walking distance to like Broadway Plaza. And it like the home that we found for him was in his price range. He's approved up to 650, but we found a condo for him for 420 so well below his means and so that's just context for the people that don't know the situation and so when he hesitated on like wanting to write an offer on it um I was like wait a minute like if you want to go to Tracy like there's nothing out there like that for you if you're looking for a nightlife and like a social structure and things like that um, and I, I could feel the conversation wasn't headed in the direction that I wanted it to. And you, you can like, in, you have that intuitive feeling of like, oh my God, I could have done a way better job on that call. Well, that's when you call Elias because Elias is going to put you in check and give you a reality and feedback on like, you know, first of all, he could probably have gotten a way better deal and a way bigger house and more bang for his buck out in Tracy where like you can get a home for 500 or 600,000 and it's like a five bedroom, three bathroom with a big ass yard as opposed to a condo that's 800 square feet. So um, I went back, I went in the MLS after I got off the phone with Elias, I sent him everything in Tracy and his price range. And I said, if you wanna go to Tracy, let's go. Like I am down to take you to Tracy and show you everything under the sun. Just let me know what you want to see and I'll schedule the appointment. 
and the conversation changed to, oh, well, what about that Walnut Creek condo? Like, can we go back and see it again? And I'm like, oh, okay. I see what Elias did there. It was like, (laughs) it was like, it was like a 42 fake. You know what I mean? It was so, uh, it was just cool. Like to see how the psychology of a buyer works. If we know as real estate professionals, how to control the narrative, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think it all just comes back to like being open-minded and play offense. Don't play defense with your buyers. Good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Uh, appreciate you sharing Melody. And and here's the thing. Sometimes it's just like, hey, I had this conversation, you know, like what's a different perspective. And I'm here to always give you guys perspective, good, bad, and ugly, whether we differ, whether we disagree, whatever, it's all perspective, right? But instantly when he said, I want to look in Tracy, she's like, there's nothing out there, but for cows, cows and flat land and it's hot. So she instantly sold from her pocket, not from his pocket. And just like the case with Hayward to Elk Grove, found something that was more suitable for him. So really good stuff, Mel and George, really good stuff. And if you could share that, 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 um, that Excel spreadsheet, we would love to check it out. Let's go back. I actually just, um, as I got busier, I, I basically just, uh, created a a tutorial video on how to update it for the VAs because I shared it with Cynthia. So she was like, we should share this with the team. Of course you did. Of course you did. (laughs) I love it. I love it. All right, so I saw some other hands up there. Let's go back to the Real Scout, how people are leveraging Real Scout to get market updates, market stats, and how they're sharing that with their consumer. Did I see another hand up when we were on the Real Scout conversation? Maybe I missed it. Uh, Vanessa Vo. So Vanessa, hopefully everyone's good and healthy and happy in your family. I know the kiddos were sick. So Vanessa, let's turn it over to you. Yes. Hey, good morning, everybody. We're all good. I'm just getting ready now. Um, so... Uh, how I was able to leverage Real Scout was my, I had a buyer who was set, super set on um, Oakland, but, you know, we were just getting beat left and right, offers after offers. And then, so I was like, you know what, let's open up our search a little bit more. And so by doing that and putting her on the Real Scout um, market alerts, I was able to show Richmond, San Pablo, and still be able to still send the Oakland ones. And so after everything, she was able to see there's way less buyers in the Richmond, San Pablo area. And so nonetheless, we ended up moving out that way. And that's where we won the offer 710 and was instant equity. And so now they're going to renovate it up to the million dollars, but the way that she wants versus, you know, paying that million dollars in Oakland. And it's like, you know, not the way she wants. Hmm. I love this. And Vanessa, Obviously, you have gained mad traction since you started with us. When first starting out, what were ways that you were able to really start understanding the market? What did you do? Where did you go? And how did you really, really start to formulate your craft? I know you use Real Scout, but like that's something that you're sending out to the consumer. How did you really start to build this knowledge? And how did you start com- communicating with your clients early on? How did you do it? <laughs> you sound super astute now, and you're still new. Thank you. Um how did I, I, it's just a matter of staying up to date in these markets. You're not just looking in a specific area. You're having to, you know, like expand your search yourself and, and getting to understand what else is out there versus, oh, this is all my client wants. Well, that's it. Kind of like that tunnel vision. You mm-hmm. kind of have to be like a little bit more bigger um, mm-hmm. in, in your searches. I love this. I love this. And I saw what you posted on social. I I love it because yeah, it's like, we're learning all these things and now I'm going to try to communicate it in in my way, just like I'm key current. It matters. Right. Yeah. And for that specific conversation that I had, I was just doing my follow-ups and this client, she's just on the verge. She was like, interest rates keep going up. She's a little bit older. um, And I was just like, you know, there was a time where it was at 12%. You know, my grandma bought at 12%. And then she just kept listening and she called me. She was like, you know, how about we just go and take a look next week? I was like, okay, girl, let's go. <laughs> right. Because here's the thing, like I said, early on in the conversation and um, um, Jeanette, I'm going to come to you and then I'm going to go over to Ilona. Average credit card right now is 17%. Right now, mind you, there's probably people on this call right now that have a lower interest rate, <laughs> but let me ask a question. I don't <laughs> I don't need to know the number. 
How many people right now have some form of credit card debt? Please raise your hand. Please give me a reaction. All right, it's normal. All right, it's okay. We're all, we do that. I always think like, well, why was it okay for you to go and spend X amount of money on whatever that product was, or whatever the appliance was, or whatever the trip was, or whatever the shoes or the handle, whatever it was, but you find that it's challenging because I'm at a six and a half percent interest rate, right? It's like psychology of a consumer. They'll buy shit all day long at a 17% interest rate, all day long. So I think about these things. I'm like, well, hold on a second. Like, we just but have not to a house. educate. <laughs> right, right. So Jeanetta, you had your hand up. Let's go to you and then we'll go over to Ilona. Um, my hand was up because, you know, you said something about real scout and I'm, I'm so, I'm so freaking new. It's frustrating because a lot of times I feel overwhelmed and I feel like, and I may be off topic here that sometimes these team meetings are more advanced than where I'm at, but I'm still coming on. I'm still listening. <laughs> I hate numbers. I've always hated numbers. I was a Marine Corps recruiter and it kicked my ass on a daily basis. So numbers and I don't get along, but I'm trying to understand and I'm trying to understand the programs and I'm trying to, you know, make it all fit. When is it going to come together? Because it's not coming together and it's frustrating. You just said something about Real Scout I didn't even know existed. And, 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 and first off, I appreciate your vulnerability in, in chiming in. And I'd love to hear from somebody else that went through this and then, you know, was able to fight past that. Here's the thing, Janetta. At first, there's tons of tools that you're going to have. Not everything is applicable at all times for you and your business. Real Scout is something that you use just to put it on autopilot to where your clients are constantly receiving updates for the homes that fit their criteria in that particular market. Anytime they see a home, they thumbs up it or thumbs down, you get interaction on the back end. So now in real time, you can say, hey, Mr. Buyer, I saw that you just looked at 123 Main Street, 125 Main Street. I'm setting up tours for the weekend. What day do you want to go out and see homes? And so it, it's okay to be exactly where you're at. It just takes time for you to let, and let me ask you a question, Janetta. How much are you actually saying these things out loud? Like if you're not into the data, if you're not into like the stats, the figures, the housing market, all those things, you're learning, right? You're taking this in, you're coming to these sessions. How much are you actually saying it out loud to somebody else, practicing with somebody else, recording yourself, saying these things out loud so you can start getting into a cadence? How often are you doing that? I try to have a conversation every night about the the data, about the, the percentages, the interest rates um, with someone, anyone, um, whenever I can. Or to myself, I talk to myself because okay. sometimes I'm by myself. So, All right. so Jeanette, um, I, I want to allow you to do this, you know, and, and this is a space where we can be completely brutally honest with each other. And I see tons of hands going up and I love this because people want to contribute. I want you to allow yourself to have some grace. You come from an environment where you are held to very, very high standards and you are supposed to do things very, very regimented. And so I feel like that's a part of who you are and will always be a part of who you are. You also have to allow yourself some grace to learn, to develop your craft. Some of the things that we come into the meeting and talk about, you may not be ready for necessarily right now today, but coming in two weeks, you may be ready for it. Vanessa is a brand new agent. So it's not like we're having people that are too far out in production that you can't relate because there's new people here. So what I want to allow you to do is to give yourself some grace. I'm still learning and I've had my real estate license since 2009. I've learned more in the last two years since COVID than I probably did the three years prior. So it, it's, it's okay to allow yourself some grace. It's allow yourself to find your cadence and your rhythm and your presentation. Right. We handed you like a bass and we said, here's our songs. You're like, I don't even know how to play these songs. Right. And so you're slowly trying to find your rhythm and your cadence. And, and Janetta, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, I think you're doing a great job. You show up. You spoke very you're spoken very well. And it doesn't have to be high level, high level analytical stuff. That might not be your jam. Right. When I talk, that's not my jam. I understand the data, but I'm not high level analytical. I'm not. That's not me. You talk to Ernesto, Ernesto might hit you from a different angle. That's not my style. So you're going to start to find your style, find your cadence, but you have to allow yourself some patience and grace. Let's hear from a couple of the people. I saw some hands up, King. I see that you're at a stoplight or you're actually stationary. So King, let's hear from you, bro. 
Yeah, so I want <clears throat> to, this is something that I've been working on myself. Like, for instance, when I was playing tennis the other day, I was like, I, I was talking to myself, I was like, man, I fucking suck. <laughs> and you know what? When I was in that kind of mind frame, I was sucking. But as soon as I made a millimeter shift and said, I got this, and you know what, I'm not that bad, I started playing better. So I think, you know, when you when you talk to yourself and you're like, oh, I hate numbers, I don't have a good relationship with numbers, you're making something that's hard for you even harder. So I think you need to make that millimeter shift and change the way you think about stuff. And the truth is, you don't have to be good at everything. No one's good at everything, right? So you got to stick in your stay in your lane, focus on the things you're good at, but also, you know, change your mindset and you can be good at anything, right? And that's the thing. Here's the thing about feeling overwhelmed and like real scout, I got to learn the MLS. There's so much shit, right, that you have to learn and overcome. But when you look at it that way, it's it's even more overwhelming because you have so much stuff going on. But I really think that you need to focus at like one thing at a time, you know, one just one checkbox at a time. And I think when you can do that, it's going to feel a little bit less overwhelming. And I agree with everyone in the chat. I mean, you know, going on four years now, I'm still feeling overwhelmed. That feeling of overwhelmingness won't go away. But what will change is your confidence and the way you tackle and handle things. And I, I think that's that's key. So but really, I think it starts with your mindset, you know, the way you look at things and, and, and the way you talk to yourself and think about yourself, I think, is number one. So. Yeah. That's something that I wanted to chime in on. Wonderful, man. I appreciate your contribution. I couldn't agree with you more. Jeff Phillips, you had your hand up, my man. Let's go over to you. Are you contributing on this or is it something else? Both. So I'm going to do Real Scout and uh, Janetta. So for, I hear exactly what she's saying. I was there. I'm still learning. We're all still learning. I'm three years into having mine and I'm still learning new things every day. And what I would say is just shift your mindset to, the introducing these new concepts are frustrating because I don't know them to I'm so thankful I'm getting introduced at least to these new concepts and hearing them because at least you have a basis now if you've never heard of real scout and you went your whole career and never heard of real scout you never got to utilize it but at least if you heard about it and then you can dive deeper into it later you have that basis. So that's how I try to adjust things when I'm like, damn, I've never even heard of that. Like, well, at least I have now at least been exposed to that experience and exposed to that. And now I have the team in place to go ahead and learn more about it and to dive into it and tap in with anybody on the team, tap in with me, tap in with anybody. That's the beautiful thing about this team. And that's what I'll also hang my hat on to you is just say like, it's okay to say, hey, I don't really know that. Let me tap in with my team. Yep. How many times I've done that and talked to Elias, talked to Kang, talked to Roxanne, talked to all these people on here and just said like, hey, I don't really know that. Let me go ahead and gather that information for you and then come right back to you. And so then I go let's, on. Let's do this for a second, Jeff. And I'm so glad that you're saying this because Janetta, a year and a half ago, um, Jeff had similar, well, what do I do? What do I say? We had conversations about looking at comps, how to communicate the information about comps, how to talk about comps playing catch up. And when those houses actually close, what is the new benchmark? When he tells me that story now, it is like night and day different, like night and day. Like I literally get goosebumps talking about it because I saw the growth, but it was trial and error. I fl he fumbled the ball so many times and he finally said, okay, I got this now. I got this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now for the real scout part, um, another tool, way that I use that tool is I'll send out the market um, update and like send it to them on the biweekly or monthly, however you want to set it up. But it also gives you a soft opening and a value add to talking to clients that you haven't talked to in a while. So yes, it's really, really good for those clients that you have talked to and they're, they're thinking about it, they're on the verge and you guys are conversating all the time, but it's also good for those ones that you know have kind of ghosted you. Hey, wanted to see, I noticed that you opened up my real scout with the update on the market. I wanted to dive deeper into what those numbers are saying. Did you have any questions? I now call you with a value add and now you look at me as an expert, 
but it also just gives a soft opening instead of just saying, hey, I'm calling you, but I don't really know what to call you about because we haven't talked in a while. Yeah. I have this thing, this ace in the hole that I can always send out and then refer back to that. Um, but Janetta, give yourself grace. What, what Elias is saying is the biggest thing. And if you allow yourself that grace, you'll allow yourself the opening to, I'm big on energy. So if you are in an energy of frustration, less things come into your brain and they flow a lot harder. If you're opening and you're more into a grace mindset, into a grateful mindset and a thankful mindset, and just that grace of, I will get this, but it's going to take time. Those things flow and it, it, come, it comes easier at a certain point and it starts to click easier. That frustration, it holds you down. It bottles you down. It uh, puts you into these negative mindsets and you don't want to be there if you're trying to learn this game. Mm, I love it. And you know, th this, is, this is the power of, of this team and, and we're all learning together. Janetta, like what you're experiencing you look around the room, there's 64 other people that have experienced some level of what you're going through right now, right? And they're here. They're here to learn, contribute, and find new ways. And I'm going to come over to you in a second, Ilana. When, when we're looking at this, so I have an example here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different examples of information. Do I expect anybody to, to know all of that? No. But to like high level, some information about like, hey, $141,000 was the average equity increase year over year in California. That's important stuff to know. Now, do I expect for you to explain inflation since the 1980s and how that affects interest rates? Not necessarily, but it's good to have a general understanding of the information. And then you pick and choose what's going to work best for you. Ilona, you've had your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, that it, it also is a little frustrating for me, but once I realized, and we always talk about this in, in um, coaching, is once you develop your systems, things are going to start flowing. So you can't just expect to develop your system overnight. You can't just like know that like, oh, I'm going to watch one tutorial on Real Scout and I'm going to be an expert. So I know that it's frustrating, but what is really important to remember is that Team Fast provides the most like high end tools in the industry. If you talk to anybody else from any other brokerage and they, they find out that you're using Real Scout, that you're using Follow Up Boss, that you're using Sisu, people are dying for those things. They have to pay out of pocket for those things. And so we get access to that as a team and it will take time to learn those things. But once you in place those things in your systems, you, it, you'll see the flow happening easier and it's not gonna happen overnight. I'm still learning how all yes. that that works. So I just, I I'm appreciative it. for what you guys. Want. You know what? And I appreciate you, you sharing this. And, and before we move on, I, I want to share this with you. And I tell the, the team this all the time, Janetta, and I'll come to you in a second, Cortez. Janetta, the first things first, action is always going to trump everything, right? You, you take the action and the action is going to then do what? It's going to give you a little bit of experience. Based on that experience, you're going to get feedback, right? Well, I didn't say that right, or I didn't do that right, or I didn't explain that right, or I didn't have the right system. Based on that feedback, it will then tell you what are the necessary skills that I need to improve upon, right? So it's just like, I don't know this Real Scout. Let me do this. If I don't know Real Scout, let me put myself in the system as a client. Now, I am giving information to myself as a consumer. I'm responding as an agent. So I know exactly what it looks like from a consumer side. That's the easiest way to learn how to do Real Scout is put yourself in as a client. And that's step one, like, oh, 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 I just searched for these houses in Irvine. And now I'm getting an alert as an agent that me, the client, just looked at seven homes. I should probably call myself and say, hey, I saw that you just looked at five homes. I'm setting up my tours for Wednesday. Which time do you want to go out and see these homes? Simplest way. And so, Janetta, uh, what I did is I put my calendar link down below. It's calleliasestudio.com. Um, schedule a coaching session with me. I want to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you through this. Cortez, you had something, and then we're going to move uh, on to shift gears. Well, just real quick, I kind of everybody kind of covered what I was going to say um, with the mindset, what Eric was saying. I, I really think that worked. I, I, and using the team, like Jeff says, I've reached out to lots of people on the team to ask about Rick out and um, – I just took a lot of the tutorials too for uh, follow up boss and real scout. And, you know, you still learn as you go. I actually put my girlfriend um, and follow up boss. And one day they, 
the virtual assistants called her. And she's like, who are these people? And I got on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, this is... Uh, but I talked to the virtual assistants, and then they taught me a lot how to get them to, to work for me as well. And uh, you just got to, you know, take the action, and uh, it, it'll it come clear to you. I mean, over time, I guess. I, I know that I'm using it a lot more than I was at first. When I first looked at it, it looked like straight foreign. Yep, it, it is. It's, it's calligraphy at first. It's really like just trying to figure things out. Um, what I want to encourage you to do, and we'll talk about this more in our coaching session, Janetta, is um, fast class. You have everything that we're talking about that you are challenged with or need help with from tech, like all that's now created on videos. So you can just go back and like watch the videos I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then during our coaching session, we'll look at all the tools and be like, okay, what are the top things that you should be using right now? And what are the things that maybe can wait for 60 days, can wait for 30 days, can wait for 90 days, whatever that case is. So I'll work with you through this. Um, I also wanna share a couple of things with you guys. Um, like I said, I, I just pulled up a few things. What I want everyone to do is follow this dude, um, Barry Habib. I don't know if you guys saw this presentation, Are We in a Housing Bubble, 613.22. This was a really, really powerful session. I timed it. Um, I would start it right around 718. Actually, but if you have the hour, you're at the gym, you're traveling, I would listen to this, um, this video and then follow him and watch all the stuff. Really great way of communicating data, information, what is driving mortgage rates, what is inflation, how those two correlate, just so you can educate yourself. Um, this was mentioned on the mastermind. I highly, highly recommend that you follow this dude or at least watch this presentation, Barry B presentation. We are in the housing bubble, 613-2022. Um, you guys saw this. And if you guys didn't see this, Keep Current Matters allows you to obviously go here in the link in the bio. Now you're going to have all of the information that you could then use in all the articles. Now, what's great about this is that you guys can use any of the infographics. You guys can share this information. You guys can look here that in one year, homeowner equity gains was an average of $141,000. If appreciation in certain neighborhoods are up 35%, values are up, then a 6% interest rate really doesn't hit as hard, but it's about understanding these things. And, and, and Janetta and for everyone else on the call, these are just tools. These are just resources. These are just places to go. United States Bureau of um, Labor Statistics, all kinds of things that you guys can go look at and just feed your mind and then decide, well, what is going to be applicable to me in that time for that client. So I just wanted to share, I know it's a lot of information, but I've been taking in a lot of information. So I just wanted to kind of compartmentalize that so you actually know where to go to get some of this information. Now, anybody else have some thoughts? We had some really good you know, shares, some contributions. I see Ernesto smiling. Is there anything else anybody else would like to share, contribute on? Um, Bill, let's hear from you, big dog. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I kind of understand Janetta, and uh, and it's nothing against anyone, any of that, but I put in there, one of the things that stuck with me when I first came here was Elias gave the words, be unapologetically you. Those of you that have been on here with me a few times, I'm a more a rash kind of redneck in your face kind of person. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a laid back smoozer. I'm a realist. You know, if you want it, you want your dreams built up, go somewhere else. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to not lie. I'm not going to give you smoke and mirrors. If this is what you want to do, this is what we got to do. If you can't do that, I can't work with you. Um, the other part is I am also very remote compared to 90% of everyone on this call. A lot of the stuff that goes on on here is Bay Area because that's where this team was founded. I live up here in the mountains. I'm in a completely different world. I get calls all day long because everything up here is affordable. I've got five referrals from Redfin and um, in the past week on a house for $108,000, uh, 180,000, you know, 200,000. But people don't understand up here is fire insurance. Fire insurance is $8,000 a year. You know, it doesn't exist in the cities. So yeah, houses are cheap, but when you calculate that in, your equation and you're going to spend $800 a month on fire insurance alone above and beyond your mortgage. Now we got to change what you're looking at and what you're qualified for. So it's finding the stuff in these calls that works for you. 
a lot of the stuff doesn't work for me. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand half the stuff that's going on when they're talking about Oakland, San Francisco, San Ramon, San Pablo. I know the areas. I've lived in this state and up here my whole life, but I don't live there. I don't know that stuff. And, and, and I don't understand the thinking of those people. I understand country living up here in the mountains, in the woods, shooting deer in my yard and hunting turkeys and all that stuff. Um, but there's still stuff in here that's good for you. There's stuff that's going to build you up, let you get the tools you need to build your business the way you want it to be. And I'm not the most successful guy. I'm not the most anything, but I'm doing better each year. My first year, I had five deals. My second year, year I had nine deals. This year, I've had five so far. One just fell off, but I got six in the pipeline that I'm going live probably by the end of this week with a mountain retreat. Then I got to buy her a house. I got another guy wanting to sell and buy. I got another one in two weeks that we're going on the market. So I'm building traction. It's it's just time. It, yep. It's staying true, staying loyal, picking up the bits and pieces that work for you and using the assets that are there. And frankly, I don't have time to look at these assets. I'm not good at them. I don't like them either. I don't like the, that, that stuff, but I'll get there. I'm just not there. I'll get there. I'm going to do what works for now. Totally. That's all I wanted to jump in with. And I appreciate you saying that, Bill. And here's the thing. We we tend to talk about these things, you know, maybe once a week. But what is the universal message here is that we develop humans. We talk high level about emotional intelligence. And we will always, always, because this is the universal message that everyone can attach to we will always have the conversation about proper mindset, always. Because no matter who you are, what market you serve, if your mindset is strong, your dialogue, dialogue is masterful, those things are universal. We'll always talk about those things in group coaching. So I appreciate everyone's thoughts, everyone's insight. What I wanna do is I wanna wrap this conversation up. I wanna come full circle. Uh, Brenda, I wanna go over to you. I know Brenda, you're studying. You're about ready to take your test. Super stoked for you. You've been showing up for months to come to group coaching. I called on you the other day, but um, I got radio silence. So I wanted to go to you and I wanted to ask you, what are some of your key takeaways from today's time together? Good morning, everyone. Um, I decided to show up today because you did call on me on Monday and I completely froze. Um, I got super nervous and I was screaming on the side of the camera. But um, I oh, just... wait, 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 wait. Okay, thank you first off for your honesty, right? So I just thought that maybe you had walked away, but listen, I, I just cannot thank you enough for you being honest. <laughs> <laughs> I freaked out and I froze and I was like, oh my God, he called on me. Um, but yes, I've been showing up um, to the group. Uh, sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> it's okay, you're doing a really, um, really good job. Thank you. Um, I've been showing up for several weeks now and everyone is super motivating. Um, I take notes all the time. Um, and some of my, sorry, I'm like super nervous. It's okay. Just tell us what, what, you, what you took away from today. Um, today I learned, I just changing my mindset. Um, I think I've been really stressed out with studying and staying motivated and I feel like um I just get stuck sometimes in my head um and so I like that you guys said you know ch that change like a millimeter shift and you know your mindset's going to change and I think that's like the push that I needed this morning mm. is just to change my mindset because if I'm just stuck always stressing out and thinking like, oh, like I can't do this. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do it. And so I literally just need to check off those boxes every day and move forward. So you guys, yeah. I, I, Brenda, I love this. You guys, let's do this. Everyone send Brenda some light, some energy, some love. Uh, Brenda, what's your IG handle? Um, the underscore realicita. Realicita. Okay, cool. Here's the thing. And let's talk about a win. She was on on Monday. I called on her. She got a little bit nervous, which is okay. This is a, sometimes a nerve wracking environment. But what did she do two days later? She stepped up. She put her camera on and you're here. And that's what it's all about. Same thing with you on social. 
Like, I want to encourage you now, before you even get your license, start talking, start telling people about your journey, what you're learning, what you're experiencing, that, hey, you are facing your nerves, but you're facing them head on. And you want to share some of this because that story that what you just shared, I promise you, left somebody on the screen inspired. Left me inspired to see that in two days, you stepped up and said, you know what, I'm going to do this and I'm going to put my camera on. And you probably thought, hopefully he doesn't call on me, but I called on you anyways. There was just, I just felt like I needed to. So Brenda, thank you for your share. Thank you for your contributions. Vanessa Yepes, let's go over to you. Vanessa, key takeaways from today's session. Hey, um, I love just hearing the things that people are having issues with because even seasoned people, not me, not seasoned person, but I think even the seasoned people have moments where they feel like what's going on. I'm doubting myself. So just to hear other people's issues and concerns or what's not clicking for them is it's super refreshing and it's nice because it you know it helps settle your own nerves so my key oh it's so cute um <laughs> my key takeaway is pretty much just i'm on the right track we're all doing good just keep moving forward and keep having our community and our togetherness and we got this yes i love it vanessa i love it dan sunberg let's go over to you my man uh, once again welcome back um i want to hear key takeaways from you my my brother oh um so I jumped in uh, halfway through, so I don't think I got all of the takeaways from, from everyone, but it is always, for me, reassuring, too, to kind of hear from, from everyone in terms of the, the, uh, these sorts of reminders and, like, the, the challenges that everyone's dealing with. Because, like, I, I was just, uh, I think, Vanessa, what you were just saying of, like, uh, no, matter, no matter where you are in the journey, uh, it doesn't, the, some of the nerves don't go away. And, and for me, it certainly hasn't. Uh, and it's always reassuring to hear for other people too. It's like, this is, this is part of the journey and you just have to accept it and just, just move forward with it. I know after every closing I have, I get this fear in my stomach where I'm like, oh shit, where's the next one coming from? And, you know, and it's still, it always, you know, winds up, winds up coming from somewhere, but I still get that. And it's just like, nope, just, just keep doing what you did to get the last one. And the next one will come. Mm, I love it, brother. And I always appreciate your insight. Um, Ernesto, let's go to you, my man. Always, always dropping gems. And would you like to say good morning to everyone? Say good morning. Good morning. Say have a wonderful day. Tell them to play like a champion. Okay, you can go downstairs now, okay? Love you. Just take her advice, all right? You guys really that simple. Play like a champion, all right? Um, Ernesto, let's go to you, big dog. Uh, yeah. Guys, listen. I'm not trying to be sappy, which I always am sappy because I'm an emotional <laughs> being. Like that, like my mom and my daughter, like like that to me, I don't care if I do nothing else. I don't care if I have any material things, like that means everything to me. So, sorry, I had thought I'd share that with you. Go ahead, Ernesto. Yeah, the only other thing that I think about is as much as like I love data and I nerd out on it and I pull stats and I'm looking at trends and I'm calling the pendings, like I love all that stuff. At the same time that we want to be careful and i always say like moving buying and selling is first and foremost a human experience there's something else going on like consumers aren't looking at interest rates and trying to decide when to buy or sell i i don't believe that so uh, i recently got a listing in richmond uh, east richmond heights that i signed and i saw the packets of the two people that didn't get it people that are way more seasoned than me i'm kind of surprised that i got it and i asked her i was like why did you choose me she's like you're the of, of all the people that I interviewed, everybody else came over it like it's almost like they already had. They just like data dumped on me, <clears throat> their marketing plan, the numbers, their experience, my reviews. And the only person who asked me questions and listened to my needs was actually you. Um, and, and then I, I gave her a list of phone numbers, you know, rather than like post these client reviews that don't have any, you know, context. I gave her a list of clients that she could call. So the, the point of this conversation is. As much as data is important, and yes, it's going to help, uh, but let's just be careful to not just like data dump. So if you're if you're newer and you don't you don't feel like you can explain the data to the degree that someone way ahead of you can do it, like that's okay. Don't worry about it. Like we'll do it. It's human. Ask questions. Find out why they're moving, why they want to sell, uh, why they want to buy, and you can always come back with that information and, and get that for them. So. 
Uh, if you're new and I'm hearing, you know, we're seeing a lot of people raise their hands and there's discomfort with real scout and there's discomfort with the data. And I know it gets intense. Uh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. So that's like my biggest thing is we still have to listen first and foremost, and the data will help reinforce that. Um, secondly, you know, it's also, we have to use it to kind of set proper expectations. It was uh, Andrew Ruska the other day in Slack, there was a little thread going and he was like, I might not take this listing. And other people responded, why would you not take a listing? He's like, I don't want to deal with unrealistic sellers. If you're way off from reality, we're just going to waste a bunch of time. So I, it's funny, I got an email uh, yesterday from a guy who's a friend and he wants to sell his property. He's like, Redfin has it at 950. I think I'm ready to sell. I was like, we need to talk. Like that is way off. Like all the comp show, like literally there's three, same size, same year, same floor plan. It's the exact carbon copy of his property. We'll be lucky if we get over eight. So um, yeah, hopefully that, that kind of helps. You guys were on this mastermind on Monday. I think Melody was on there. A couple of you probably were on there. Um, over a thousand people on this mastermind. And um, I got asked to contribute. So I contribute from, from my angle. My angle was vastly different than everyone else's angle, but that was my version of it. And that's how I articulated the message. I'm on that meeting. And a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing was from an economist that or used to be an economist. And I'm like, some of that stuff is over my head. When I'm on a presentation, when I'm with a consumer, like I am super, super emotional, I'm super human, and I am just the way that I am with you guys. I know the stuff and I know when to pull it out when it's necessary, but I never lead with something that feels super, super uncomfortable to me. I lead with this human side, my energy, my enthusiasm, my passion, my stoked on life attitude, that will get me so much farther. I use the data as a resource and a tool to pull when needed. So let's see this. Mel, I want to come to you full circle. Close this out, big dog. Uh, appreciate you being on today. So Mel, takeaways from today's session. Melanie, Mel and I actually did a deal together last year. And she was kind of like, wow, you say that? Or you do those things? <laughs> I was like, it's just me. I'm just a human being. And this is how I sell. So Mel, uh, let's go over to you. Key takeaways from today's session. And let's wrap up the today. Is it loud? Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear, you're loud. Okay, cool. So a key takeaways from today's session is 100%. Like if you're not keeping up with the market and how to explain the information, which is only a part of the process, right? I'm about to go over the, the second part of the process in a second, but first part of the process, educate yourself, watch the keeping current matters, watch, you know, there's a couple of different websites that they dropped on the um, Monday morning mastermind, Elias. I don't know if you got those links, but I saved them and bookmarked them all. Um, I'd be happy to share them and put them maybe on Slack later on today. Actually, the send, send them to Judith and then Judith will put those all in our weekly newsletter. Yeah, I mean, you can never have too much information in this market. Second thing is you can never follow up too much. I've learned that. There's no such thing as too much follow-up. Follow up with your past clients. Make sure that you're hitting your database at least three to four times a week. Right now, I spent four hours yesterday in the Walnut Creek office. It was just Ben Rojas and I. All I did was go through my CRM, go through my Real Scout, go through my database, and just start following up with people. Just get on the phone, start having a conversation, right? Um, no such thing as too much follow-up. Third takeaway is, you know what? Empathy. That's like the other 50% of it. Learn the information, but how you articulate it and how you have empathy for the other person's journey and really feeling their words and understanding what it is that they're telling you. That's the, that's the whole other half of it. And I am working on that myself because I... In the beginning of my journey, Elias knows this, I lacked a ton of fucking empathy. I thought my shit did not stink. And I realized really quickly that guess what? In this market, that's not gonna work. Don't walk into every situation as a know-it-all. Know that you're always learning. I think, you know, Janetta, you touched on that in the beginning. I've been in the business nine years. I'm learning new things every single day, girlfriend. You're never gonna know it all. You're never gonna be you know, an expert at every little thing because the real estate market is always changing. There's an ebb and a flow to this. So realize that this is a process and fall in love with your journey. So you guys 
big ups to this team. Like, let's get out there. Let's get some touchdowns. Let's fucking win. And let's learn and grow and share the information. That's right. That's right. You guys, I love you. I appreciate you. Sending you huge, huge levels of gratitude. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. I appreciate everyone's thoughts, insights, perspectives from all markets across the state. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of your insights. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace. And then uh, Colette, the newsletter comes out every single week. So make sure to tap into that. If you don't have it, I'll make sure you have it. Peace.